Friday, uh, we're back in the studio to bring you what we know how to do best. My producer said I said this, but it's best. Anyway, my name is King Kwaku Mensa, and it's episode 18 of Showbiz University. Welcome to your number one showbiz podcast in Ghana. Yes, we discuss everything entertainment and in between. We bring in resource people when the need be. We lash the backs of people when the need be. We compliment people when the need be. Everything in between, you know, we don't leave no stone on 10 show produced by john andrew papo ado emmanuel osei owusu and executive produced by george salia welcome to showbiz university so today on lecture time we're talking about songwriting and it's wahala in ghana and our guest for today is none other person dan baba sadiq of three music politician entertainment uh, stakeholder etc etc baba sadiq will be sharing some insight into songwriting and the whole kwam eugene versus mr drew issue but before we zoom into conversation with baba sadiq you know a songwriter is a professional musician who composes writes or creates musical components songwriting gigs can include writing lyrics i mean someone can contract another person to write lyrics for him melodies hooks or the entire song for the artist and it is absolutely okay to contract the services of a songwriter as a musician it is not all musicians guys get this in your head especially the musicians in ghana or the fans in ghana you people make the most noise it is not all musicians that know how to write songs yes and there is nothing wrong with contacting a, a learned person who is well versed in the skill of songwriting to write your song for you there is nothing wrong with that in fact let me bust your mind right now there are some very popular songs you sing to from very popular artists all over the world that's they did not write the songs. Typical example, Umbrella. Yes, Umbrella from Rihanna. Rihanna did not write Umbrella. It was written by someone called The Dream. Yes, it was written by someone called The Dream. It was a collaborative work between Rihanna and The Dream on Umbrella. Another popular song from a famous artist that she did not write the song is Irreplaceable from Beyonce. Yes, whenever you are out there shouting to the left, to the left, know that you are singing lyrics written by Neo, R&B musician Neo. Yes, he wrote Beyonce's Irreplaceable. So there is nothing wrong with Kwame Eugene writing a song for Mr. Drew to sing. Kwame Eugene is a gifted musician. He is a good songwriter. Yes, we understand that. So why are we making a fuzz around Kwame Eugene writing a song for Mr. Drew? Why? Another angle to is Kwame going around interview to interview just saying, yeah, I wrote this song for this person and he did not give me the due credit. And there are rules concerning songwriting in fact music production in general everyone who contributed to a body of work a song needs to be credited there is something called a split sheet you have to fill it write whatever role any other person played so they can enjoy royalties did Kwame Eugene have this conversation with Mr. Drew that's a question we need answer to so if you're out on radio stations or tv stations or granting interviews and saying you wrote the song for Mr. Drew and now the the song is a hit and Mr. Drew is making noise about it. Why? He sang it. He's supposed to make noise about it. It's his song. You wrote it. Yes, but it belongs to him. What rules or whatever contract did you go with Mr. Drew? What did you sign? That he was going to give you credit when the song blows or you were going to get royalties when the song... What did you sign? If you don't tell us that, don't go about just spreading information. Yeah, you wrote it and so what? Mm, yeah, you wrote it and so what? Anyway, let's have this conversation with Baba Sadiq. So Baba Sadiq shares insight into this, more insight into this. Let's take a listen. So there is a whole notion about songwriting and the fact that in Ghana in particular, some artists feel that if a song is written for you, it means you're not good. Oh, that's what the general public believe. The uh, reason why I'm saying that is Kwame Eugene and uh, Mr. Drew's issue right now. As an entertainment person, what do you have to say about that in general? No, I think it's a very wrong, wrong, um, uh, what's it called, assertion, mm. or wrong belief. I mean, songwriting has always been there. Songwriting is as old as music creation. 
you know um, as a talent you don't have to write your songs and in the more matured music market um, it's a value chain and songwriters are a very important part of the chain you know they write their number of talents who have gone on to create like to create massive global hits and they never had to write you know if you have that skill that's fine but just some talents just have the ability to be able to perform the songs that's written for them so why not you know I think that it was very ignorant um, sometimes um, there are some narratives that some ignorant narratives that makes their way into industry and kind of becomes the narrative of industry I don't know how this came into being but at a point I think that it was a very ignorant narrative that came into industry and then everybody sort of seemed to have caught cold with it mm. you know but there's absolutely nothing wrong with being written for it's actually a standard thing um, and today I mean um, if you look at all the experiences and some of the hits you are, if you are a talent you do not necessarily have to write sometimes you can have a writer's block you need to be written for sometimes I saw you grow out and you face out of a particular space and there may be new songwriters with refreshing ideas and concepts who will be able to give you that hit that you've been looking for you know all you have to do is just perform it you know so there's nothing wrong with it how do we change that narrative you're saying how do we change that narrative that if a song is written for an artist to perform it means the person is not that talented enough to be called a musician it, so the same way we created the wrong wrong uh, narrative for industry um, sometimes we allow industrial talk platforms to be hijacked by very very ignorant um, resource persons I think it's time to replace that and ensure that thought leadership takes the lead when we do that and thought leadership takes the lead and there's better and informed conversations in and around industry gradually some of these perceptions will go away mm. you know but because we, we didn't have that and there are a lot of ignorant people that come in once they make the ignorant comment gradually build by bit bit, bit by bit it connects and creates a bigger narrative for industry mm. you know but there's absolutely nothing wrong with being written for right now coming to Kwame Eugene and uh, Mr. Jew's issue or any other song writers story that has come up in recent times what is the best way to approach a, a scenario like Kwame Eugene and uh, Mr. Drew's issue where he feels he's written a song for Mr. Drew it has become a hit and now he's on radio or TV or platform saying he wrote it for Mr. Drew and he was not given the rights. There's no problem with announcing it. Uh, there's no problem with any talent voicing out um, a part of an agreement that they think had uh, had been had been breached. You know, but the standard is once you are engaged, you are often paid for writing, and then when you are paid for it, you can um, you would also be credited for it, and then even for publishing purposes as well. Um, whatever agreement you sign after, because beyond being paid, you need to be paid royalties for writing the song, because you have a publishing rights um, um, to the to the to the new material that has been created. You know, and so usually this is the standard that should be able to do. From the way the conversation is going, it seems as though there was a certain verbal conversation or verbal agreement one way or the other. There was a there was a, a verbal agreement of sorts. Mm -hmm. You know, one doesn't know, but I mean, uh, we can only relate it from what is being put out there from Kwame and everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's absolutely no 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 nothing wrong with. Mm -hmm. A talent voicing out his concerns of an agreement that he thinks is 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 breached, but usually these things are often handled off um, off public, mm. so you can have a better arrangement with it. Because you know, if he if by now he doesn't have that a better arrangement regarding uh, the publishing of the song, I mean he can do that now. You know. So that's the most important thing. Right, thank you so much. I know. Thanks for welcome. Yeah. Mm, so that was conversation from Baba Sadiq. And uh, as I was saying, interesting times ahead. Uh, Kwame Ujin says we'll hear from his lawyer, Mr. Jury, saying some other things and just bashing Kwame Ujin. Low-key, low-key jabs, like, mm, 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 low-key jabs. But Senasin is here to bring us three entertainment news that went viral.
So Sanasen is here to bring us three entertainment headlines that went viral. Sanasen, what's up? What's what's cooking? What's cooking? Everything has been going on well. I mean, this week we've had a lot of wins right here in GH. So it's time to bring them the gist. A lot of things trended, but they can get only three. So hi, my name is Sanasen. You're welcome to Gist Corner on Showbiz University. Here I bring you three trending topics that went viral on social media over the week. Our first story for today is quite it's not quite it's actually very good news that black sheriff won the BET best international flow award yes first of all like we have to put it on record that he is the second Ghanaian to win it in i think in four or five years of his inception mm-hmm. 2019 2020, 2020 five years of his inception ghana has taken it twice it's becoming like a ghana thing stormzy even won one so we can claim stormzy a little so yeah and and check this out the only african to ever win best international flow at the BET BET Hip Hop Awards. What's from Ghana? They are from Ghana. <laughs> yeah, that award is ours, actually. That category is actually ours. We hope that we get people to, you know, continue the legacy. That's just by the way. So, Black Sharif won the Best International Flow Award at the BET Awards held on October 3, 2023 in Los Angeles. He was nominated last year and he didn't win. He lost to um, this artist from Gambia. He's called Benjamin Epps. He, he lost to Benjamin Epps last year. So, he was nominated again this year and a thing for him never lost he brought it home so he was nominated alongside ko from south africa sampa the great from zambia major rd from brazil central c from the uk nino from france tasha and tracy from brazil aka from south africa gazo from france and jay has from the uk and like i said it's it's the second time this award is coming to ghana so we are all very excited for black sheriff and especially because it's black sheriff the the young guy who is just right like that so we are so so happy for him and congratulations to him again we are just hoping that we get someone to continue the legacy like i said i don't know i mean you guys can tell us who you think is going to continue for us next year hopefully i mean who will be nominated we'll be glad to see your comments on to the next story it's it's celebration throughout we are entering the december jamming period i mean the year has been hectic we would have to jam so sarkot has announced the rapaholic the 11th edition of his annual concert rapaholic he termed this one as the rebirth of rapaholic last year was the 10th edition so the 10 years a decade of rapaholic and he's rebirthing the rapaholic meaning that it's about to be reborn a whole different experience i'm expecting that he was going to give us a whole different experience but at the same venue at the grand arena same day same venue but hopefully a better experience than what we've enjoyed in the past 10 years and his announcement was a photo on his twitter and it just went all over he was trending number two with the hashtag rapperholic rebirth 23 so we are hoping that december people get value for their money of course rapperholic is going to be sold out already from what we've seen now it's a sold out show so we will just be expecting nothing but the best from obviously Sarkodie. yeah and uh it's on the same day with Shatawali's uh, freedom concert Shata has cancelled the freedom wave concert he's not serious yeah <laughs> king said he's not serious but i don't know i i just found it unfortunate that he cancelled that particular thing because i was really looking forward to see a five-day shatter and medical you know week of musical emphasis but uh i don't decide for charles niyama so i think he'll do what he's gonna do to my third and final story so Nibadu was on tv3 new day today this this morning in an interview with kukiti and as his sign of message he's saying that the youth should calm down with the pressure on the president because he believes that the president is is not sleeping or is not is having sleepless nights with what is happening in the country and i believe what he means by what is happening is you know there have been like five protests in less than two weeks in in the country so we should calm down for the president and i don't know but people don't seem happy with such comments because ochami kwami made the same comment about you trying to sort of fix ourselves and leave the politicians to do something i mean people are not happy with it because they kill to vote for these politicians they don't just sit there and they just come they put in effort to put the politicians there so i don't think it, it, it gets people excited when they are in the moment where everybody's eyes red and you are saying he doesn't sleep i mean we also don't sleep you get it so yeah people are talking about sony Bodu and generally people don't seem happy with the comments he has made or his remarks about what is happening they believe that if you are not going to support them don't say some although it's not really the best assertion but i mean you either side with them or you keep the opinion yeah so share your comments on the stories that i have brought here this is the end of just corner 
stay tuned to showbiz university this is the 18th episode thank you for listening i'll catch you next week so that was Senasen with three headlines in the entertainment industry. Your Mind Day segment is next. Now, last week's episode, I asked you, what movie have you watched more than five times and why? Here are some comments from our fans. Now, Nana Kuya says, Boys Before Flowers. That's the title of the movie, but she refused to add why she's watched this movie more than five times. Zenga Ada says, Merlin, Prison Break, and Escape from Sobivor. We say one, only you, you mentioned three. Okay, let's go on. Daniel Tay says, The Train by Mount Zion Movie Production." my all-time favorite so inspiring right daniel we hear you nana oc amwakwa says last night a fall from grace and be careful what you wish for yao putin says italian job that's a very nice movie italian job abna k yadom says mine is a series jane the virgin i always go back to it all right sonia opon says what happened to monday that is also a very nice movie uh steven john says my favorite cartoon movie mama coco where are the cartoon lovers well you have one on showbiz university right now you're straight anyway so let's move on straight to this week's question now i'm coming to the ladies ladies let's be honest what makes a guy immediately attractive we want to know the boys we want to find out we want the information we want the key in your opinion what do you think makes a guy attractive share your comment with the hashtag showbiz uni and i'll find you wherever you are to read your comment in the next episode episode. Weekend Playlist segment is next. If you've been following Showbiz University, you know every week I bring you 10 songs you can jump to over the weekend. And this week is nothing different. Let's move straight to my list. At number one, I put Medical featuring Mayo Kun on a song they titled Balenciaga. Good play, anyhow, no police. Obi say MDK, mark by me. We the pop champagne, no by me. Hey, um, who is a client, me a brony? Share, are you aware? We know the bed. Who the abra? Major again. 6 a.m. boy, something. I'm still in the club, ganging and banging no more. Every day I'm booking trips. Every day I'm spending bricks. Holiday parties to trip. Balance the aga. Money day man, no day sleep. Cause you know I'm chasing dreams. Make you know man, no day play with my daily paper. If it's not working for you, we go see later. Gizno also has a new song and it made my number two on my weekend playlist. Gizno featuring Kamido, title of the song Eyes on You. Baby, do me bad man thing. Genera and design my thing. All the girls, I'm the neck my thing. Like only you deserve my thing. Now, Guilty Beat is a Ghanaian producer. He produced Aquaba, Pilolo, and all those bangers back in the day. Guilty Beat is back and he features Ladipo from Nigeria and Nesta on a song he titles All In. Catch a case, get the two tone protect with the matching face. She said, If you want to show me that you love me, just be there on the sad and the happy days. I see in both eyes the questions you never ask. Lips too sweet to tell me the bitter fact We can only hope for what the future will hold I, I just want you to know The way you cool my temper Take me away from all the madness in the world You're a keeper Akwabwa buried his father some few weeks ago May his soul rest in peace, Akwabwa Senior And Akwabwa has a new song out titled Ya 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 I've not listened to it yet but comments from fans says uh, This sort of sounds like a tribute to his dad and all the pain he's going through So this weekend, if you're in pain, Akwabwa has you covered on a song he titles Ya 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 <laughs> If you say, oh, be a moa, oh, nim. So, banabay, dia, nesebe, yen, mo, nyam, po. Ma, fu, tu, fu, no, wo, dini, ko, yo. Kwa, jya, kwa, buwa, nan, 
say good boy oh Come then for say But they be well, they be there as you They be well, they are They are Montreal Keche has released a December banger in October. Yes, uh, that is one of their trademarks. They normally release bangers uh, getting closer to the festive season so they get all the parties to jump to. And this song, they featured Mr. Drew on it, another hit maker. Mr. Drew on the song they titled Party of the Year. On my number six song is D Black featuring Kitty on a song they titled Bambalika. It sounds more like a childhood theme. Bam Bam Bambalika. <laughs> Have you seen your friend? <laughs> anyway, so Bambalika D Black featuring Kitty. I surrender oh, to your back. Sweet me like Fanta. Hide me like Ganja. I surrender. Be your defense. Sina Souls Plenty Evil is still ringing in my ear. Uh, over the week, I took time to listen to the lyrics of the song and it made me fall in love with the song all over again. So he made it to my number seven on my weekend playlist. Sina Soul Plenty Evil. Plenty Number eight from Ghana is Sefa from Black Avenue Music. Sefa featuring Mayway on the song Vibration. If you've not heard Vibration, I don't know where you are in Ghana. Like, I mean, this song is a vibe with the whole Freddie Mayway part and all that in between mixed with the Ghanaian vibe. Tell you have to listen to Sefa Vibration featuring Mayway. Now let's hop into Nigeria to bring you some playlists from Nigeria. Poco Lee and Kiss Daniels together have released a song, Jubo Love. Title of the song, Unleash. Hey, yo, and last on my weekend playlist fave put together dope caesar and ajabo hustler on a team song they titled pop sam i know you did everything just to save me but the music got to take me now i'm on my toes like a drug overdose joy overflows in my heart for the picture have to say cheese for the people have to say please because no one ever knows my mind's on my soul joy overflows in my heart
So let me run you through my top 10 weekend playlist once again. Medical featuring Mayo Kun, Balenciaga, Gizno featuring Camido, Eyes on Me, Guilty Beats, All In featuring Ladipo and Nesta, Aquabua, Ya Ya Ya, Keche, Party of the Year featuring Mr. Drew, D Black, Bambalika featuring Kiddy, Sina Soul, Plenty Evil, Poco Lee and Kes Daniels Unleash, and Fave featuring Dope Caesar and Ajabo Hustler, Pop Sermon. This is how we wrap up today's episode of Showbiz University. My name is King Kweku Mensa. Catch you on the flip side and make sure you keep following with the hashtag Showbiz Uni. Goodbye.